What's up guys? In this problem, we have a lot going on. And what I want to do is kind of explain what are some of the things that we kind of leave off when we talk about PEMDAS. Now, if you remember PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction is a great way to just kind of remember the general idea of how to follow the order of operations to simplify an expression. However, there's definitely some haters for using PEMDAS because it doesn't really give you a full explanation or the context of when and how to use the order of operations. So what I want to do is just kind of highlight some of the key mistakes or key points that we leave out when we are teaching a problem using the order of operation. So the first one is going to be the P. We're going to recognize P as being parentheses, meaning we want to do the operations inside parentheses first. But the problem here is there's only one set of parentheses, which is going to be the four plus one. Again, to PEMDAS's credit, we are actually going to do that operation first. But really parentheses, what it means is grouping symbols. So that's going to include these parentheses, but also could be brackets or as fractions, meaning simplifying the numerator and the denominator. That's one thing we leave out when we're dealing with the P because we just immediately think parentheses, parentheses parentheses, but it's really kind of more in grouping terms and grouping. We can use again, brackets as well as the numerator and denominator when we have a rational fraction like we have in this example. However, when you are doing grouping terms, you always want to do the innermost grouping term first. So we basically have three grouping terms, right? We have these parentheses, we have a numerator and a denominator, and we have brackets, but the innermost grouping term are going to be these parentheses. Therefore, I'm going to apply the operation first. And just so we can go through the step-by-step, -step, I'm going to rewrite the whole problem so we can move on to the next stage. Now, the next acronym is going to be exponent. So we'll go ahead and use a E for that. And exponent is going to have a base as well as a power. And basically, we're just going to want to go ahead and simplify them. And now, again, we have to make sure that we are not going outside of our grouping terms, right? Because again, we can simplify this exponent, but we cannot simplify this expression being squared, nor do I want to like distribute that square or really do anything with this. Because again, remember, there's three grouping terms that we have. We have our numerator, we have our denominator, and then we have the brackets. Inside of this grouping term of my numerator and denominator, I can go ahead and simplify with the exponents. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So you can see here, two squared is four, five squared is 25, three squared is nine. And again, just a quick little reminder here. This is a three squared. So it's minus a three squared. If I was going to square a negative three, I would be using parentheses. So again, that's why parentheses are so important to understand is the negative with the three or is it not with the three? And in this example, the negative was not with the three. So that's why I only squared the three. But again, I can't do anything with this exponent until everything inside of here is going to be simplified. Now, before I can simplify this whole expression, I got to focus on my numerator as well as my denominator because the next acronym for PEMDAS is going to be multiplication and division. And what's really important about multiplication and division is it says to go from left to right. But again, there's this confusing portion that you see here is we have a four times four. We have a 16 divided by two. But then you can also say like, well, I technically I'm dividing the numerator divided by the denominator, right? So isn't that division? And yes, that is correct. But remember, when we're thinking about a rational expression using PEMDAS, we got to think of the numerator as its own grouping and its denominator as its own grouping. So therefore, I'm just going to focus on simplifying the numerator and focus on the denominator before I can apply any division inside of that fraction. Now, I only have multiplication and division in my numerator. And again, I'm just going to go from left to right. So I'm going to do a four times four, which is 16, and then a negative 16 divided by two, which is going to be a negative eight. Okay. And I know it's tempting for students to want to say, well, oh, four divides into negative eight or four divides by 16, but no, just focus on simplifying the numerator and the denominator. And now, since we have eliminated the parentheses in the numerator and denominator, we've eliminated the exponents, eliminated eliminated the multiplication and division. The next thing we need to focus on is addition and subtraction. Now, again, addition and subtraction is also going to be from left to right. So again, in this case, we're going to subtract the 25 minus nine before we go ahead and add the four. And again, a lot of students will say, well, subtraction comes after addition. And again, guys, it's not in order. Addition and subtraction are kind of grouped together, just like multiplication and division. Now, at the same time, I can also go ahead and subtract a eight from the 16, right? Because then that's in its numerator all by itself. And there's no other operations for me to apply. Now, Finally, I have simplified the numerator and I have simplified the denominator. Now I can simplify inside of the brackets, which is my third grouping term that we've had inside of this problem. Now I can't divide 20 into eight. However, I can go ahead and reduce it. And what I mean by that is I can divide eight and 20 by four. That's going to produce a, an equivalent fraction. Now there's nothing else I can do inside this bracket. So now we can look outside the bracket and recognize that, oh, now it's just being squared. So therefore that's going to be a four to the 25th power. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that is your final answer and example when you have three different grouping terms. Hope this video was helpful for you to be able to identify some of the common mistakes that I see students making when using the order of operations. If you want more examples, check out the playlist and resources I have down below, or you can check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.